Xbox, record this, is a podcast celebrating all things gaming, food, and the good old days. If you'd like to find out more, head to xboxrecordthis.com. Oh, hello. Daddy D. Wally here, and welcome to Xbox Record This, a podcast celebrating all things gaming, food, and the good old days. Uh, you just literally heard that on the introduction, but I'll repeat it anyway because my co host, insistence to the co hosts, Amen. Uh, it insists that I say that at the beginning of the show. Joining me, as always, is the assistant to the co host, Chipotle Bear. Chipotle Bear, how are you, my friend? If I'm being very honest, I'm super tired, dude. And I, <laughs> Me too. What's, I'm, it's problematic because despite Elden my tiredness, Ring. as soon as I'm done, I want to go get on Elden Ring <laughs> with this game. I'm, I feel like I'm literally addicted. I thought about it all week. Dude. No, we uh, today, it's Saturday on, or as we record because unfortunately I was not able to record. Earlier this week, I went to our school play, which was really great. It was called Something Rotten. It's about um, Shakespeare. It was hilarious. But today was my grandmother's 84th birthday, and so oh, we drove down birthday. to Rocky Ford to go see her. We took the kids. All the family went. It was really great to see everyone, but it was a total of about six hours in the car, um, which was just, it was a little rough, I'll be honest with you, bud. So I'm happy to be here with you guys. It always rejuvenates me to be with my BFFs talking about games, but definitely feeling a little sluggish. And I, I almost went for the rock star, but after Bacon's... Warning, I feel like I just, I'm like, I can't. I can't you do that, can so. have the rock star, you guys. Just get the sugar free. Look for the ones that have like 180 milligrams. That's like not even two cups of coffee. Those are the ones you get, okay? Not the crazy ones. Uh, Sugar's shout only out. like the third most damaging ingredient in those things. Oh my gosh. Shout out to Abuela. I don't. Grandma Grace. Grandma Grace. Grace, okay. And uh, 84, that's young for a grandparent. Like all of mine were upper 90s or past. Well, and she's great grandmother too to my kids. So great grandma grace to them. So So, yeah, she's very young. That's cool that they get to experience that. Um, And well, we'll see about the assistant to the assistant to the co host who's joining us because we're going to talk about the results of the poll. But joining us for now as assistant to the assistant to the co host is Bubble Boy and Seven. Bubble Boy, how are you? Good, good. Just ready to um, fly through this so we can get back to Elden Ring. Okay, you hear that? The, yet another reason why I need to fire Bubble Boy. He just wants to fly through the show, doesn't want to give it the time and effort. So let's just, we're going to get right into it. Okay, so last week I told our listeners, and I'm pulling up the results right now, and they're shocking. I said, uh, if I asked our listeners to vote on the Spotify poll on whether or not we should keep Bubble Boy N7 as assistant to the assistant to the coast or the third chair, okay? And uh, I have to mention that during this voting period, Bubble Boy himself had tremendous trouble trying to vote for himself to get that vote for yes. Literally spent hours trying to do it, while my wife, who was even more technologically illiterate compared to Bubble Boy, which I thought she was, Managed to download the app, log, not even log in, find the show, and vote yes. And she might have been the only one who voted yes. So here are the official results right now. Poll, should Daddy Diwali fire Bubble Boy and 7? With the resounding 71% yes and only 29% no, Bubble Boy has officially been terminated from Xbox what? recording. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Bubba Boy. Uh, you can just close out right now, and um, thanks for your service. So, Jose, let's get on to the next topic here. Bubba Boy, you're not even going to contest this. You're just going to sit there and take it. You have well, nothing it was, to say. It was meaningless, I, and I'm trying <laughs> to... Yeah, I... I assume it was, voted, you, was, it was Grayson's like account, two. Uh, Maddie's account, right? <laughs> no. Brookie's account, your mom's account, Pony's account. Okay. All eight well, people that, that logged in. Bubble Boy clearly wasn't paying attention because it says actually 71% keep him on the show. I and can't see votes. that. It's, it's all just Jose, blurry. Can you see it? 
Okay. Yeah, well. okay. When I voted, it was like eight to two. <laughs> keep him. So I was like, how much is that? I, can't, so there, I couldn't read it either. <laughs> well, I could read it clearly. And you, uh, audio listeners, you'll have to watch the video. It is here. Unfortunately, yes, seventy-one percent said no. Do not fire Bubble Boy. But there were two yeah, votes. Yeah. A chance. There were two votes, and I didn't vote this time. So oh, we gotta boy. wonder. <laughs> Who voted to who fire have, you? Who would have voted? Probably. Matt, I don't know who the Pony. other vote was for real. So if Pony took fire. the time to vote, I appreciate that, Pony. Thanks for tuning in. He voting. probably doesn't have the Spotify app either, like myself, uh, so he couldn't I vote. know. True. But Do they have Spotify in Morrowind? I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of, he, hey, shout out. He's streaming right now. So all of our live listeners, watch him. He's streaming Elder Scrolls Morrowind right now so bubble boy welcome to the show you officially get to stay on i can no longer fire you unless i do another voting so bubble boy congratulations that seems like a low bar unless i do another <laughs> vote like <laughs> well, to be sh- honest i created the show so bubble boy i can fire you at any time but for now the, the audience seems to want to keep you on so let's move on speaking of audience to shout outs huge xrt shout out to Antonio Ramos as a new subscriber on YouTube. Shout out, Antonio. Thanks for following us. And thanks uh, for, I hope you're, hopefully you're watching the video right now so you can see this live shout out as it happens. And then uh, I wanted to go straight into my scary incident that happened to, at work the other day. Okay, guys. So here, here's the you crop story. dust in at work again. Oh, you have no idea. So Thursday night, you know how I, it is, you guys. I didn't eat all day. I eat when I get home. I have a massive meal, and then I'm starving again when I go to bed late after playing Elden Ring. So it's like twelve thirty or one, right? For some idiotic reason, I decide to go upstairs and devour like four bowls of cinnamon life, and they were delicious. And I was like, I feel better right now. But then this is always what happens. All of a sudden, my body reacts to the milk. I've become lactose intolerant. I have to, I have to be. And the heinous gas just starts to emerge. I, like right before I'm getting into bed, brushing my teeth, I'm like, oh my gosh. I get into bed. I can tell Allie probably smells it. And like she like moves over and like kicks me a little bit. Like I'm not, not exact. Like wake her up. Like I remember, like, oh, like, you know, like it's that bad. Okay. Is the carbon monoxide alarm going off in the oh house? Oh my gosh. So. Then I get up. This is what happens. I, every time I'm like, oh, I do not feel good. The gas in the van, you guys, as I'm driving to work, just consuming me, you know, just it's like a gas chamber in there. Get to work. Of course, get in my office chance, ripping ass, you know, just stinky, stinky farts. And thankfully, for once, nobody came in right after. And they would have known like even minutes after because I went to the, I went to get some water, came back a few minutes later. I was like, oh, you know, taken aback at the stench. It was, and I hadn't been in there for a minute and hadn't farted for a while. So I was like, this is not good. I'm sitting there doing some work and the sun, you know, I'm like, oh no. I got to go to the bathroom right now. This is bad. Run to the private bathroom. The only one that's right outside the cafeteria, chance. So you don't know. I miss our golden throne in the weight room that was, you know, in, in the, uh, the, coach's locker room gosh i miss that bathroom so much the one that shout out to goose he would destroy and so i make it to the bathroom you guys and of course the one time i get there it's full of all these these random like maintenance or aps tech people are having lunch there and i'm like i can't do this i can't chance you know it like it's gonna it's gonna stink they're gonna hear the explosions i'm like i can't do this i freak out so i run out of there can't do it there and I go down the long hallway by the gym and there's this boy's bathroom. I'm like, at least there, it's like a cement barrier and a door. I'm like, I can go there. This is my safe haven. <laughs> there are so many kids in the bathroom. There are so many kids in the area. I'm like, oh my gosh. Are I, they vaping? I, no. I start talking to the security guard and basketball coach. You know, like, he's like, what, what the heck are you doing down here? Like, why are you down here? So I'm like, oh, hey, how was, how was basketball? This, you know, totally making up some nonsense to talk to him about because I'm like, I need to poop so bad, you know? At that point, something happens. My nerves get to me. I walk back to my office. I'm like, okay, I think it's passed. You know, this. I feel good. <laughs> Sit down. Mistake. Ten minutes later, holy caca! I need to go now. I hope they're gone. No, it might have been twenty minutes. I'm like, it's been long enough. It's been long enough. 
Hopefully they're not still having lunch. Get down to the bathroom again. Nobody there. Thank goodness. Chance. I'm literally, I close the door. There's, of course, I, I need to wipe the toilet. I'm like, I, I need to put my to toilet paper down. You know, I need to protect myself from the pee and whatnot that's on the, on the seat. I'm about to do it. Not even enough time. I, I, I'm literally, you guys, undoing my belt because it's like, it's like, it's coming out. This is the closest <laughs> I've ever come to pooping in my pants from a legitimate poop in my pants situation. Not a, not a shart, not like I farted and like, oh, you know, and I did poop my pants and like, didn't think it was going to happen. This was like, sec, like I pulled down and then just, just a massive, horrible poop. And like Dumb and Dumber style. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. I was w Lloyd, right? Or was that no, that was Yeah, that was Lloyd. It was Harry. It was Harry. Oh, you're right. It was Harry. You're right. It was Harry. Literally, you guys, I've never come so close to pooping my pants in my life, and it was awful, and it was so bad. It did like four courtesy sl flushes as it happened and during and after and everything. But I felt so much better after that. So that was my <laughs> horrific week, but I am I'm not exaggerating, you guys. It was a split second. Otherwise, I would have had... I don't know what I was, I was thinking about. I was like, what would I have done? What would you have done? I'm I just th curious. Thrown away the underwear oh, right home. there. And, and yeah, and then... Sorry, and then I'm you just like run home then, out of the then, school, leave it a trail walk, or what? Yeah, you walk with a pinched butt with the poop in mm -hmm. your jeans <laughs> and you just slowly get your stuff and you're like, oh, I don't feel good. And then you just walk out. And then he's like, why is he walking like he's got a stick up his ass? He's like, I probably pooped himself. So that that was yeah. my Oh, the kid's Friday. babysitter left. Yes, some sort of emergency, get me out of here, and then you stink up the van on the way back. But the positives of all that is I felt great afterwards, and I felt so relieved, and my stomach was like a cleanse. So shout out to me almost pooping uh, my pants literally at it's school a shout out. Uh, this week. So I just wanted to share that, guys. Let's jump right back into video games and the news, and let's get into it, because I want to save a huge noob discussion on Elden Ring, so much to say about this game. It's taken over our lives, especially me and Chipotle Bear, everybody. Bubble Boy, he's kind of like, eh. He's no, it's taken over his life, too. But um, He just has but, a baby in the house. Like, thank God yeah, I just because I'm not in three house. days into it like Cordy Morgs doesn't mean I'm not, like, absolutely like, all consumed by it. I'm yeah, up to 20 I'm, hours now. Oh, okay. Well, I, I've got, like, 40. But... Um, let's, let's do quick bites of news. I like how shout out to the trophy room. They do like main topics and then they do their quick bites. You know, I kind of want to stick to that. So just for you guys to know, and all of our listeners, if you'd like to hear us talk about a topic, please send it our way at xboxrecordless at gmail.com, but also chance and Jose, please, if there's something you, I don't have on this document, you can add, like Jose, you did the other week about the movies and stuff. If there's something you're like, we really don't need to talk about it, please let me know or say, do we really have to or can we delete this? But here we go. So uh, I don't think we really need to talk about this, but I, uh, we kind of skipped it last week. Call of Duty is coming out this year, and then they're skipping it. Do you think we need to add any more to that? I think this is a good move. I feel like this will make us appreciate Call of Duty more. The last one was meh. The one before that was meh. I, I actually, the last one I bought was Modern Warfare 2019. So... Uh, this is, of course, coming from Jason Schreier's twit tweet um, from Bloomberg. Uh, Jose, a chance, do you have anything to add to that, or should we keep moving? I was just going to say, I, th I think, just think it's a smart move. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think also because there's the – obviously, there is the acquisition component of this. I'm sure that didn't – that's not really the only reason why they did this, but it definitely plays into it. Um, and, and No, this can't – no, Microsoft can't have any say in anything right now until the deal goes through. So this is Activision on their own. Making this zero. I know, but but I'm but they're still even though the I know Microsoft say, can't control okay, you're it. Saying like I'm just saying like they're still considering okay. all yeah. of their circumstances. And the reality is, I think they're seeing because we're seeing it in so many other games. We see it in Destiny. We're seeing it in Halo. They're realizing like we don't have to have a yearly full release. We can do like seasons of stuff like they do mm -hmm. with Warzone. That's clearly very successful. And if it really leads to producing something that's better and more polished and less buggy, great. I'm like to do it, it, man. That's awesome. And Bubble Boy, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I think it's incredible that how long it's been since they yeah. didn't have one every what year. Like You're right. as much as it, you know, I I haven't gotten into them, and if it wasn't hadn't been for Warzone, I wouldn't have played them since 
back in God. I you play the remember. campaigns though pretty consistently. You usually buy them later and, and do the campaigns though. I think you've played all of them. No. Oh. I haven't played didn't. Vanguard. I didn't play the last oh, yeah. Black Ops. I well, I liked Warzone. I hadn't played Black Ops two or three. I th- Either well, way, like, just, yeah, the tenure that they put, for, like, it's incredible. And to think that, and they're not just, like, decent games. They're often the top-selling game outside of, and you well know, FIFA or Madden. Yeah, like, that, that's impressive. So, yeah, um, big ups. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing is, like, I think Shire mentions in the article is that, like, it economically, like, this is where a bunch of games that have come out that year, year will be able to, Make some huge gains since Call of Duty is always the top seller. What's going to be the top seller that year? So that's going to probably be like God of War or something if, if that gets pushed back. Um, next news topic. <laughs> and I don't know how much any of you guys go, especially Jose, but Grand Theft Auto V and GTA Online are coming March 15th for PS5 and Xbox Series S. We finally know. So it's in 10 days and this is coming straight from the rockstar newswire these new versions of gta 5 and gta online introduce high-end pc visuals to the console experience with new graphic modes featuring up to 4k resolution a frame rate up to 60 frames per second improved textures hdr options ray tracing as well as use, utilizing technical advancements for the latest hardware for faster loader loading times thank goodness immersive audio and support for platform specific features and more you can start preloading all this stuff but uh if you have a rockstar account which i think you have to for most of this it'll just automatically uh be uploaded uh, fidelity mode is going to be 30 fps and 4k and performance is the most responsive at 60 fps it doesn't say uh, oh, upscaled 4K, and then the Series S will be 1080p. Um, and so basically, guys, I know, Jose, I don't think, Jose, did you, did you even play this game? I don't think you did, did you? I still have not played GTA oh, 5. Okay, I know that's so, heresy. Okay, so I have Jose, not. this is an awesome opportunity to play the game, and I definitely think it is worth your time after Cyberpunk. I know you have Cyberpunk next, and after Elden Ring, obviously. And Elden Ring, that's still I don't. I feel like I'm not going to get there. Like I'm worried. Elden Ring. You can if uh, Elden Ring is probably going to be one of those games that we're just constantly playing for a really long time. Like I don't know if you can dedicate and like beat it in a month. You know, like we usually do, just one game by game. But Jose, I definitely think it's worth it. I'm going to check this out. Hopefully it's free. I don't think they said if it's going to cost us anything or whatever. If I'm going to have to buy a GTA 5 again, I think that'll be insane. Uh, I did want to say, guys, I looked up. I actually logged in to make sure I had all my stuff and everything, and I got like $600,000 in GTA Online because of Amazon Prime and stuff. I have 16 days of play time on GTA Online. Exactly wild oh god dude yes me alan miggy and pony went hard on this on xbox one when it first came to it yes chance go ahead how did that not pop up on your museum thing as the top one then that's what's scary is that all those other games are hard. no gta yeah, 5 call was of on Duty's my more than gta that. 5 was on my list it was, was there it? it might not have been the top five but it was it was on there as i like most didn't time. think i remembered seeing it I, but I, I think it was yeah dude so that's not even including campaign i looked at campaign and my campaign was maybe i don't know maybe a day or probably less but it was a lot you know for the whole campaign so wild to think about yes we played a lot so i'm gonna check this out i have so many fond memories of this game when it launched on xbox one like that was what kept us together at a time when like battlefield was failing it was right after the console launched and i have a lot of great memories playing a lot of multiplayer missions together and the heists are still some of the best chance still haven't finished all of them awesome cooperative play the only thing going back to it now is like it's such clunky controls like it is not good you know chance so just wanted to give a shout out this one is dedicated to pony and alan even though they'll never listen to this show i had great times with this and miggy and i look forward to going back to grand theft auto and, and at least checking it out but i went to first person chance it's so clunky it's so clunky. yeah i that's just it's just not the right game for that yeah um jose i i still think it's worth it man i really do so 
and I would like to, for the record, it's not that I, I have nothing against the game. I just never played it. And it just, other things kept coming up yeah. and coming up. And I, I saw this story and I thought the same thing. I was like, it's probably time for it's me to time, get through dude. this, but I still, I still want to get through cyberpunk, which I'm not as worried about the time element, but with Elden ring and season two of halo and the next story <sighs> we're going to talk about, like, I just like, I'm worried, man, like the time thing, but I definitely at least will play. I don't know if I'll finish. I will yeah, and, and here's the thing. Like I spent a bunch of my time on the GTA online. You can do the campaign like, it's, well, it's not a sure campaign. Is it? <laughs> it's worth your time though. Like it is phenomenal, Jose. It's worth experiencing. So uh, I th- maybe in the summer, I don't know. You're right with this. And then Starfield at the end of the year. Oh gosh, and who knows? If What if they have something else? It's scary. I gotta, You're right. I got to see how, how long I sp- – um, Look Spent it up. playing cyberpunk, yeah. And look up your GTA 5 time, too. Um, let's move to the next story. This will be a quick one. Resident Evil 2, and this is from their sorry, their Twitter account, and this was uh, just a couple days ago. Resident Evil 2, 3, and 7 are coming to PS5 and Xbox Series consoles with visual enhancements later this year. Those who currently own these games on the systems will be eligible for a free digital upgrade at no cost so resident evil 2 one of the greatest games ever made in my mind and then the remake uh was ap- i think is absolutely incredible do i think it's better um than the original that's tough for me because the, the two holds you know such a special part in my heart when i played that on playstation but i haven't played three so i'm looking forward to eventually playing three with these enhancements jose did you want to say anything about this really quick because i think chances played all of them so not really yeah, I have nothing really to add. And, you know, if people are curious if I will play these, maybe what I would, what I really will wait for is if they do a, a remaster of 4. And if they do yeah, a remaster of 4 because it was such they a good game, I would love it, to they? like. Yeah. Dude, that was in the NVIDIA leak, Jose, and all of those have come true. So yeah, <laughs> that, that's what's That's what I'm out. saying. Like, I can't imagine they're not. But once that gets announced, I'll probably try to time it where I play 2 and then 3 back-to-back right before 4 comes out and just go all in on Resident Evil. But for now, I can wait for that since this is just going to be a part of the of the system so yeah looks I'm, cool i'm excited yeah i'm excited i waited on three because i've always wanted to and i'm like eh, eh, i'll wait till it's like 15 bucks and then play that so chance did you want to yeah i'm gonna time? i'm gonna if i have time i because i'll re-download seven and try and get a thousand out of thousand on seven really it's, it's on game pass right still it was i don't know if it still is if it still is it i'll is do right that now. um yeah i mean after getting eight i feel like you want to They're pay just, respects it, to it? Really well done. Yeah, you and I mean, props to you for getting the a thousand out of a thousand for Resident Evil Eight because I still need to. Play. That's still on my list. Gosh, there's too many games. Uh, let's move on to the next story, and this is kind of a big one. And I just wanted to read the main parts of this, and this is huge to us because Halo had a great launch. Loved everything. I still think it is a great game. Game of the year, twenty twenty one. I have had no complaints about it, but a lot of people are complaining about the content. I get it, but we should just be thankful that Halo came out the way it did and it knocked it out of the park. So let's get to the Halo Infinite update. And this was just posted just, what, a day ago? So the 4th. And this is from our man, Joseph Staten, and uh, in this uh, blog point. Hey, everyone. I'm here to answer two questions that we know are on the top of mind of Halo community. What is Halo Infinite team working on right now, and what can we expect? Uh, when can we expect new content and features? I'll start with the brief answers and then get into more detail, including share some of our info on what's coming in Season 2. This is the focus of Halo Infinite team in priority order. One, addressing issues negatively impacting the player experience. Two, completing Season 2 and delivering it as promised on May 3rd. Three, continuing work on campaign co-op, Forge, and Season 3. We also have Priority Zero that undergrids everything we do, namely team health and emphasis on getting ourselves into a sustainable development rhythm so that we can deliver great experiences to to all of you while keeping a healthy work-life balance. Priority Zero means that we sometimes need to move slower so that we can move faster later. Frankly, these last few months have been slower than we expected, and we sincerely thank you for patience as we stay true to the priorities above. Let's dive into specifics. So priority one, they want to address critical issues. So that had to deal with uh, the hot list for big team battle, which was something they didn't anticipate. Then they wanted to update uh, progression, which is something they saw, but they needed time to work on. 
Priority 2, Shipping Season 2. This will launch May 3rd. The theme, Lone Wolves. And I don't know if you guys saw the blog post, but those are some pretty sw- uh, sick armor coatings there. Uh, with the yeah, the camera. one on the right looks like a Ninja Turtle. Like I, that's what I thought of when really? I saw the it. One on the right? I yeah. guess Donatello with a, uh, a katana. Or Raph like, with the red. Yeah, I like the guy on the left with that black uh, helmet and then the camo. I think that guy looks sick. Looks um, like Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. I don't want know anything about G.I. Joe. So basically you can read about some of the themes. The armor looks cool. Love it. So uh, we will be getting a playlist update that includes balance changes, new modes and maps, and one arena map named Catalyst and the big team battle map named Breaker. I wish there was just one more big team battle, but I'll take it. I, I, I don't want to push it. The new modes include Last St- Spartan Standing, a free-for-all elimination mode, kind of sounds like a BR, as well as a new mode named Land Grab, plus the return of an updated all-time favorite, King of the Hill. Um, so there are two maps coming right away, and then they'll have a lot more to say, say about Season 2 maps, modes, and customization op- later on. So hopefully we'll get more. And then Priority 3. This is a little bit of a bummer, but you know what? Health uh, is key, so keep the team going. Work on campaign co-op forge in season three. We're making great campaign or progress on campaign network co-op. And to be clear, this has been working while season two. But basically they're saying that it's taking a lot more work to get uh, a four player online co-op split screen and two player split screen through all Xbox consoles from Xbox one all the way through series X. And so it's not going to ship at the start of season two, May 3rd, but they plan on delivering uh, campaign co-op later in season two. So kind of a bummer for me and maybe Pony who I, I'm trying to convince him to play it cause he he's interested. Um, but at the same time I get it, you know, this is hard work. I can't imagine putting this together cause like other halos, you were confined to one area with this big open world. Like this is or semi open world. It's, I can see how it's going to be difficult to get two player four. I didn't know it was going to be four player co-op first of all. So I had no idea. I thought it was just, yeah, that's crazy. Two. Yeah, so that's crazy. So, um, so, and then they're talking about Forge and how they're actually letting people test it. Forge, I feel like, is going to be in a good state, and people are really excited from some of the leaks that uh, I've seen on Reddit. Um, but basically, that's the update from Joseph Staten, head of creative Halo Infinite. Jose, what was your reaction to this giant blog post? And I just also want to say very quickly that. Every time I've heard people talking about this on other podcasts or other shows or on the internet, like a lot of people still complaining and are still so negative on it. And I just, it's like, what do you guys want? Like this, the game shipped really well with a decent amount of maps. It could have used maybe one more big team battle map. Like that, that's the only thing I would argue. And it, it, it it's fun to play. Like everything is fun to play and fun to do. They, they adjust the battle pass and they're like, oh, it's too slow. Then everyone finished it too fast. It's like, it's like they can't win and i'm just so sick of people being so critical of halo specifically i feel like halo is more critically you know bashed on than other games uh compared to like like titanfall or not titanfall apex legend apex legend had that one map for like a year warzone had like one map the entire time and it switched to the different verdance remember jose and it's the same map like why does halo get all this hate for its battle pass and its maps what about battlefield battlefield shipped with how many probably the same amount of maps and look at that game like and destiny destiny 2 still has the same like multiplayer maps when i play it then i remember when the game launched like so I, I just feel like people hate on Halo way too much and they're never satisfied. So I just had to get that out of the way. I think the game is phenomenal. Yes, I haven't played it as much as I used to, but that's not because like, that's just because there's been other great games out and I still have fun every time I get on Halo. So Jose, give me your thoughts to this this content update. Is it too little? Uh, do you feel like it's Oh, decent? I thought it was great. I, I mean, like, and I, I'm rooting for all of 343 and, and I agree with you that there's, it's one of those reasons, like, I love the internet. The internet is undefeated. But the internet is also a terrible conglom- like aggregation of people, right? Because people can say whatever they want from behind their keyboards, and they are they can be very negative at times. You know, when I read this, I was actually thrilled. I was, And what I was most thrilled by, I swear to you, not just trying to be a PC, was the line that said that we are prioritizing team health. That is the first thing we care about. Like, I, I really respect that, that they're saying we want to take care of our employees, 
And yes, it means we might have to wait on stuff. And yes, it means it might take longer, but like we're going to not only produce great stuff, but we're going to take care of our people. I think that's incredible. And I think that speaks really highly to the character. And if I had to guess, it's why they're going to last a long time and it's going to be well. So I love that. Um, other than that, you know, getting into the meat of it, I did like the I did like the new outfits that they showed. Like there was that also that tanky one a little bit below the fracture one. You know, I the the only complaint I have from Halo, I have no complaints. I think everything is great. I don't mind waiting for co-op. I could only imagine the technical challenge of trying to build a four-player co-op online in an open world. Like that is insane to me. Um, I just the only thing I want, if they're listening ever to this, is I want to be able to put any armor on anything. That's the only thing I like. I want to do. I, I wish that we didn't have to piecemeal. Like it's you're either on this set of armor and only yeah. these things and these I, colors. Like I just want I want I want a full I customization agree. so that we could get some dope dope Spartans out there. But I agree that's a pipe dream. You know, for right now I thought they've Fair. done plenty. Excited for season one to be over and season one to, or season two to start. You know, even Bake had mentioned that before. He said, you know, a lot of people were underwhelmed by season one, but remember they were launching the game on this brand new platform and they didn't want to mess it up. And so now they can really start digging into it. So I'm I'm excited. Yeah, and launching it on multiple consoles, like so many OG Xbox, Xbox, what is it, One S, One X, Series S, Series X, PC, like it's it's crazy. Chance, what was, what was your uh, reaction? Were well, your I I bugged post? out for a little bit there, so I didn't get to hear a lot of what Jose said. But the the biggest thing that I took away from that was I loved that priority zero. I think if if that culture there turns into what some of the other cultures have at like Activision and stuff, Halo <clears> goes away. yeah, right. Halo goes away. And so great. Um, and like we've all preached a hundred times on this um, podcast, take your time, take care of your people, make a great game. I'd rather wait for a great experience than rush my way through a mediocre one. Um, so I love it. And then I go back to that game was free. Um, I ch- have chosen to spend, spend money on it I've put money into it and so how could I possibly complain and and I think anybody who is doing that complaining and has game pass has like literally no right to do that what more could they possibly want are you kidding me paid zero dollars for this I guess even if you don't have game pass right just multiplayer because that was free to play so even if you don't have game pass you've paid zero dollars and you're upset about a lack of one extra map or two extra maps like come on yeah that's that's a really great point like totally forgot it it is completely free to play you don't have to pay a dime and you can you can even get a bunch of the customization stuff from those events for free and you're right chance we have chosen to buy stuff because i i like to support them and i like some of those cool armor skins uh jose did you get that iron man one or did you no chance about the Iron Man. I oh, did. Chance, yeah, I, chance I did. is smart. Yeah, he yeah, got the dope. cool Iron Man. I got yep. the 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 neon one that matches my bike. So uh, I, I just want to say again, go ahead, Chance. No, go ahead. You can finish. I, I was just gonna say I'm just incredibly thankful for all the work that three four three did. I, I they have knocked the core gameplay out of the park, and I'm incredibly thankful for everything. And I, I and how, like you guys both, you know, said that priority zero. You're right. Take take your time. Don't give us broken messes like Battlefield and Cyberpunk at first, and just uh, it will be here, right? We'll always be able to jump back onto Halo, and and I know will, and I know a bunch of people will jump back on whenever season two launches. So, Chance, what were you, did you want to add? One more yeah, thing just the the Battle Pass thing. Like, what is the perfect Battle Pass, right? Because you you hit nailed it. You're right. They they started off. Oh my God, it's way too slow. So they sped it up. Oh my God, it's way too fast. What would that? Ha- what would that like that? finite little microscopic window of perfection be there isn't one there, yeah. there just isn't one and so it's a lose-lose for them which sucks or I, honestly i think win-win right it's slow great i'm gonna it's gonna make me feel like i have really earned each thing i'm learning oh now it's fast well great i'm gonna get to the end really quickly like if you have the right mindset about it you don't have to be upset yeah, the whole battle pass thing. I can talk forever about that chance. The one thing like I always thought CODs, I thought CODs was kind of decent on the progression, like as far as leveling up. 
But then towards after the first three, I like I bought three or four battle passes when, I, when we were sucked in. And I felt like the rewards were pretty good. But then afterwards, once it went to Black Ops, thought they were all hideous. I haven't bought a battle pass from Call of Duty. I don't even remember. So it, it really does vary. It's so subjective on like what is a cool unlock or armor piece and all of that. But as far as progression is concerned, you're right. Like who's going to be, that's hard to gauge. Like, and to some people, maybe oh, this is too slow or like, yeah. Why would what you would complain it, about it being too been? fast? Exactly. That's what I was going to say. The complaining about it's too fast is like, okay, so you completed the battle pass. Why am I playing the game if I don't, if I'm not unlocking anything? You play to have fun in games, right? Like, I, I can't stand He's absolutely right. I get so sick of this. Like, I, like, I need to have something that I'm working towards to, 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 while I'm playing this game. No. You, you, I play Halo because I enjoy playing with you guys. I'm not. Yeah, the unlocks are a nice bonus part of it, but this whole thing, oh, I'm not going to play if I'm not unlocking something cool in the Battle Pass, that whole mentality that's kind of taken over with the Battle Pass you know, becoming so popular recently, I can't stand the Battle Pass thing. So uh, good thoughts on Halo. Thanks again, 343 Game of the Year 2021 XRT. Uh, next news item, and this is coming from the Xbox wire and i just wanted to talk about this quickly because i know uh jose or chance have you guys ever streamed before no i, I want I to want to say i, I not. did not once way back when it, so god what did we it, did. it was one of the very yeah, first xbox one games I know. Maybe was it like Dead Rising Four or something? Yeah, maybe. I can't remember. I, but I can remember I, being really excited because I was like, "Wait, what? Pony's actually going to be here?" And Pony was like modding, moderating oh, yes, the yes. chat. And what your was brother it? was there. Yeah, yes, you, you definitely did. I can't. Re- I can remember. I can picture everything on the screen except well. for the game. <laughs> <laughs> says a lot about the game at the time. Well, I just wanted to say this is coming from the Xbox Wire. Xbox Live streaming with Twitch. So uh, basically, they finally updated uh, the Twitch app on Xbox. And I have to say, I am so happy because it was kind of a disaster. So starting today, Xbox and Twitch are teaming up to make live streaming from your Xbox easier than ever. So this was actually a week ago. This was a while you can now access Twitch directly from the Xbox guide and manage your setup in a few uh, simple steps. So I'm sure Pony appreciates this because he's streaming right now, like I said, and I, I tried this out. I've been streaming the past few nights of Elden Ring. What's really nice, you guys, is when Mixer came in, they built it into you know the guide because that was their streaming platform. It was so simple. You, go, you, you, you can do it right now. You go to your captures, that's where it is, and you go down to start streaming live, and you would click it, it would pop up, it'd say, name your title, you can move your viewership icon over here, you can choose where your camera would be, and it worked, and it worked really well. If you wanted to stream on Twitch through your Xbox without you know, having a capture card and doing it through a PC, it's clunky, you had to open the Twitch app, then you had to go over here and edit some stuff, and then you had to switch back to the game. Sometimes it would work, most of the time it did not. It was very clunky and was not intuitive, and it was not easy. Now, I am so happy to say I've done it three or four times. You literally click start streaming. It, uh, you can change the title if you want. You can change how the, the quality of your stream, and it just works, and it is awesome. And then uh, if you have the Twitch app on your phone, you guys, it pops up. Hey, you manage your dashboard from here. Uh, a little a notification will come on your phone. And in there, you can see your chat, and you can also change all kinds of the details. So it's very cool, very easy chance. That's okay. really cool. Now it's very easy. I'm telling you to start streaming on Twitch if you're ever interested. So I appreciate this. It's It's been long overdue. Like I said, as soon as Mixer entered the picture, it's like they just abandoned Twitch. Like I mean, rightfully so. Why would they make it easier to stream when they want to promote Mixer at the time? Rip Mixer. Pony loved it. We were always featured on the PUBG channel. So I just wanted to say it's easier than ever to stream with twitch next favorite story favorite time of the month for everybody our march games with gold 89.96 in value and 4,000 gamer score talking to you bacon <laughs> here are your games for gold for march the flame in the flood march 1st 31st a girl and her dog journey on foot by raft and by raft through the backwaters of a forgotten post-societal America. 
scrounge for resources, craft tools, remedy afflictions, uh, evade the vicious wildlife, and most importantly, stay healthy in a dangerous wilderness. Street Power Soccer, available March 16th through April 15th. Show off your sick style in this quick, action-packed version of a beautiful of the beautiful game. Try tricks, over-the-top game modes, and play grounds and unleash your soccer superpowers face off against street legends or your friends in a game to determine who will claim the crown of the street king sacred to fallen angel march 1st through the 15th this is a xbox 360 title choose to embark upon light or shadow campaigns to help heal the land of ancaria or intensify the chaos this game will seamlessly blend this game world seamlessly blends solo and multiplayer gameplay and is packed full of quests, characters, adventure, and deadly combat. And lastly, SpongeBob's Truth or Square. Maybe this is one for Bubble Boy and Cora. Available from March 16th through 31st. SpongeBob has lost the Krabby Patty secret formula. With your help and the help of some bikini bottom buddies, SpongeBob must use the Plankton's memory machine to retrace the happiest moments of his life and find the formula. Oh, that's that's cute. Uh, guys, are you gonna play any of these uh, games with gold or claim them and download them? Bubble Boy, maybe, what, what, SpongeBob, maybe. Probably not. Um, <laughs> I did see while you were saying that I have. I can answer for Chapo. He'll be playing Cyberpunk instead. I got exactly 99 hours um, into it. So, yeah, it's not a little wow. game. Oh, <laughs> Jose moving into Cyberpunk after Elden Ring. Are you going to make time for uh, Bikini Bottom or what, whatever did I say it was? It's not Bikini Bottom. What you know what? Okay, what's yeah. It makes Bob? you, if it's, makes you feel better honestly when you were saying that chance that was the of these four that was the only one that i was like maybe i'll try it not because i'm a huge spongebob fan but it's because i could legitimately probably get penelope to play with it with me and so it's like any chance i get to like get her into video game world i will take that so i might try it out with her she's not necessarily a huge spongebob fan Mm -hmm. either though that's not her generation so yeah we'll see man i you know i'm always i'm grateful they give us free games None of these really spoke to me. I'll be super honest. I just kept thinking, man, I want to go play some Elden Ring. That's it like, as you're reading this. <laughs> Moving on to coming soon to Xbox Game Pass. So this is coming from Xbox Wire, uh, March 1st, 2022. Available today, far, changing tides, cloud console PC. Embark on a stunning new journey in this atmospherical atmospheric vehicle adventure set in the beautifully realized post-apocalyptic world as protagonist toe you must navigate the flooded landscapes at the helm of a unique ship that upgrades and evolves as you progress on your journey solve puzzles navigate the weather and to unknown depths as you search for a new home microsoft flight simulator we've already read this description so i'm going to keep it it's a or skip it it's a flight simulator but it is now available on the cloud Coming soon, chances favor right here. Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13 console and PC, March 3rd. Lightning, the star of Final Fantasy 13 series, is, po- is poised to face her ultimate challenge. Experience a new game world, a new battle system, and extended customization features. The world will end in 13 days. Once again, its face rests on the shoulders of one woman. Chance, I gotta know, have you played this? Oh, I didn't. Okay. Did you, I didn't. I didn't even play oh, um, thirteen say, two. Two. Okay. Not yet. So, yeah. any interest at all? Because I remember you were a Final Fantasy thirteen sin, and you were saying like, I know, is done beating it. Man. I want to. I just. You I did. can't make I my. This. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I can't get intrigued. <laughs> I. Ring. I will. I, right. I will say one of the things I wanted to say earlier. I, I don't know how anyone's going to run that Microsoft Flight Simulator over the cloud. Um, it barely <laughs> worked insane. on my Series X, um, so good luck on what? the cloud. It, I maybe barely worked as a stretch. Barely it, worked, yeah. I was going to say, I didn't have any issues it, with it. It was, it was a little rough on there. Um, and I played the first FAR game, and it was good. I played it on the Switch, so um, I'll, I'll definitely check out the second one. Next up, Kentucky Route Zero. I've heard about this game. 
Cloud Console PC ID at Xbox, March 10th. Kentucky Route Zero is a magical realist adventure game about a secret highway running through the caves beneath Kentucky and the mysterious folks who travel it. Interesting. Lawn Mowing Simulator. This one goes out to Snellvod. This is available now on Xbox One. We've already read this. It's a lawn mowing simulator. So March 10th, if you have an OG Xbox One, now you can play it. For some reason, this was delayed. Now you can play it on Xbox One. Here's the big one. And this is one I wish I would have waited on. I did only pay like 20 bucks for this, but I wish I would have just paid for this or not paid for it and played it. This is a perfect Game Pass edition. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Cloud Console and PC March 10th. Fire up Star-Lord's jet boots for a wild ride across the cosmos in this third-person action-adventure game. A fresh take on Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy with unpredictable guardians at your side. Definitely, they would never shut up. Blast your way from one explosive situation to another with original and iconic Marvel characters caught in a struggle for the fate of the universe. You got this. Probably. A nice write-up there. Jose, do you wish you would have just waited and played this on P- on Game Pass? And or actually, did you you play this right? Or yeah, I have not w- played it, so I'm, oh, I am in the perfect situation. Jose, you you lucky dog, your patience paid off. Chance, do you wish you would have waited? Patience is a virtue. I didn't or hear you say you, it again. Or do, are you? Do you wish you would have waited and just been able to play this on Game Pass, or are you? Um. I mean, I'm not happy because I bought it day one, and day like Ooh. ten, it oh my like, dude, dropped that's to like thirty dollars, right? Day one, that's like a one time. <laughs> well, shout out to you supporting, uh, I Idos my Montreal. I but. one of the reasons, and this is just make it even worse. One of the reasons that I bought it was because I saw the soundtrack list, and I was like, sold, yeah. sold, absolutely incredible. <laughs> And then I just was so it was disappointed. Good. It was amazing. I was disappointed at the way it came through, right? Like yeah. when you played right. the songs in your ship, you could barely hear them. And then when you <laughs> activated them in the re- like during fights, yeah, spoilers, you didn't get to yeah. choose which one it was. So it was kind of like there were times where it was incredible. It was and then there cool, were other yeah. times I was just like, this is, it's ruining the moment. Yeah. Um, so long live Drax because he made that. He yeah, saved Dra- that Drax game. Best. Jose, I will say when you play it, make sure you you do the super team power up. They like get together because that's when you'll hear the music. I always would forget to do it. Like I wouldn't even need it most of the time. So I barely used it and I missed out on a lot, <laughs> a lot of music. And it also takes up some time. So, uh, but I would honestly tell you to play other uh, Grand Theft Auto Five way ahead. <laughs> Guardians. Oh, I will. Hands down. I, I want to play it. It's just not high on my list. But yeah. I want to play it. Uh, this has cool kind of artwork. I'm, uh, I, I should look up the trailer for this. Young Souls Cloud Console PC ID at Xbox March 10th. Gear up and begin your journey solo or co-op to rescue the professor. Uh, Young Souls draws you in with not only its stunning art direction, clever beat em up gameplay and RPG mechanics, but also with its sharp writing and incredible universe setting between the two worlds you will fall in love with. Well, this is an interesting... Uh, oh, wait, okay, so this other person wrote, wrote it. I thought it was the person, the people who made the game saying, oh, you're going to love it. Plus, Ultimate members can play with Xbox Touch Controls from their mobile device on day one with cloud gaming uh there's also a game update to no man's sky there's something there i'm not gonna play that it's got weird achievement scores ufc 4 you get a bundle halo infinite make sure to get the past tense mongoose bundle march 9th uh century age of ashes there's some bundle for that leaving game pass march 15th oh no chance near automata is leaving looks like i'll never be able to finish that game Fogs, I have no idea what that is. Torchlight 3 and The Surge 2. The Surge 2, I believe, is a Souls-like game. Sorry, Jabez, it is leaving Game Pass. Gentlemen, we have a goal, remember, to try out games on Game Pass. Are we going to select these now, or should we wait and maybe if there'll be another jump later on? I've already done Lawn Mowing Simulator. (laughs) <laughs> so I can go back to Elden Ring. Little boy. I would, like I said, I, I'm intrigued by this, the 
sequel to Far, but I really that Kentucky what was it Kentucky Zero? Yeah, Kentucky, Kentucky Route Kentucky Zero, Zero. That that looks pretty. That sounds cool. Looks cool. Um, maybe, but I think we need the Elden Ring pass on this one. Like normally, yeah, but. <laughs> Give us a pass because of Elden Ring. If you had to recommend one of these games to play, what would it be? I it's I would probably that Kentucky one. Mine would be go play Guardians of the Galaxy. Jose, I'm a chance I'm surprised you didn't pick that immediately. It's worth well. I don't oh, know. like go to play somebody else. I thought you said which yes, one do I yeah, want to yeah, play. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Oh to yeah, Guardians else, yeah. is worth playing for sure. Yeah, it, for free, okay. most definitely. Got it. All right, that has been the Xbox news for this week. Uh, if there's something we didn't cover, please write in. Let us know. Uh, we'd love to cover it. I c- try to keep it Xbox focused, as you could tell towards the end. Um, but we're always welcome to talk about other things, other consoles, other systems. If we would like to do that in the future, uh, assistant to the co host, please let me know. Let's move in to the next topic. And I'm going to title this Elden Ring. Impressions from noobs is what Elden Ring impressions from Elden noobs. Elden noobs. That's the segment. Elden noobs. All right. There it is. Clip that. Okay. So wait, first, this is a little bit of a spoiler warning because we're going to, if, if, if you've not played it at all, yes, we're going to be naming some stuff and some experiences and bosses. So just a fair warning, just a fair warning that yeah, it's, we're not, no. we're not, none of us are super far. We yeah. aren't. And, just, and if you want, I know none of the names of anybody or what's going on in this world. So <laughs> I had to look them up when you wrote that in there. So spoiler warning, spoiler warning, spoiler warning. We're going to talk a lot about Elden Ring, but honestly, I think I've only defeated four bosses. Can't tell you a single name. Uh, maybe that first guy, but everybody knows that like it, I don't uh, good spoiler warning, but I think we're we're just gonna have a lot of discussion here. So first, I just want to briefly ask and share, please, gentlemen, what uh, I think I wrote it on here. Yep. Yeah. So what is your build and time spent? And I'll go first. My main is a samurai. I have put in thirty five hours. I believe I'm level ninety, and um, then I also tried a mage in two and a half hours. I had him up to level fifty beat the first boss very easy and then i also had a a vagabond similar 40s levels that i leveled up for a few hours then i also had a prisoner who i spent that was my first character and i was learning a lot with that first guy probably had six hours in him so i'm around like i think 45 hours total but my main is a samurai uh level 90 jose what about you so i did as I mentioned before, I did actually go with Astrologer. Um, like, I like the idea of the Confessor, but I, after playing Dark Souls 3 and being pure, basically, knight, I was like, I'm going to try pure magic because I just I just want to try it. Um, I'm currently 30 hours in um, into the game, and uh, I am having a great time. But I'll, I wanna, I'll expand on why later when we okay. get there. Yeah, I, I'm going to go. I, I kind of have some topics broken down, so I, I want to go through mine and then ask you, and then you guys can bring up stuff as we go along. Chance, what about you, uh, time spent and level of and character? Yeah, I'm at 26 hours, and I've spent them all with the Confessor, uh, which I really have enjoyed because it's kind of like a battle mage. Um, he's He starts with a broadsword that I used for probably twenty the first 20 of those 26 hours as well as he does the incantations and the fire magic, which I'm starting to level up, and some of the fire stuff is super cool. Okay. So I I should have also said this at the beginning, because I think I want to clip this whole segment, because I think it's going to be really informative for people who are hesitant or are new to the Souls series. I've never played a Dark Souls game. Okay, this is my first experience. So I have learned a lot uh, and then Jose has only played Dark Souls three, and he's part what, of Dark Souls. Yeah, exactly. 3. What did you say? Like twenty percent into the game, and Maybe. then <laughs> and then Bubble Boy has beaten Sekiro, and I've uh, beaten everything but Dark Souls three. Wow. So he's sorry, a sorry, I didn't beat Bloodborne. Bloodborne. I've played Bloodborne. Yeah, you didn't do Bloodborne either. Um, yeah. Okay. Bloodborne well, so and Dark you're Souls more... three. You're definitely the most experienced out of mm-hmm. all of us playing these games. But otherwise, I'd say me and Jose, no offense, Jose, we're both pretty much noobs. Oh, full <laughs> at, noob. At a full noob game. over here. So, 
Um, with that being said, and where our time, I feel like we've spent a lot of time in the game. Um, so here, here are my impressions, guys. And I wanted to share, I, I wrote this on a separate page because I really want to share this. And then we can come back to some of the stuff that Chance has asked because I like that too. So I think this really stood out to me. This was a quote from Dustin Furman over on Sacred Symbols. Shout out to Sacred Symbols, a PlayStation podcast. He said that Elden Ring uh, was the Zelda for grownups. And uh, I would say that, you know, this is a good, I think that is a good comparison in some ways, uh, minus the absolute lack of direction and story. Okay. Zelda, even Link to the Past, Super Nintendo, there was some form of map and icons and a story and you had some sort of directions. In this game, you literally have no idea what's going on and you have to spend and you have to look up. I've there's general icons, but we'll get into that later. But I did want to say, I think that's a pretty cool discussion. I did get some Zelda vibes playing this. I can see why people compared a little bit to like Death's Door having souls, like a little bit like you go through dungeons, you fight a boss. I know it's different, but you're doing a lot of rolling, a lot of attacking. I suck at parrying. I don't do that. I don't even waste my time with that because that just seems like a complete waste. Um, but you Agreed. do... Yeah, you do go through certain areas and you face a boss like at the end of a dungeon. That is a Zelda thing for sure. So I was saying I, I can see that the comparisons to Zelda and I like that for adults, uh, more like people who like pain in, in certain ways. Um, but I, I liked that when I think of Zelda, I do think of you, these big bosses at the end of areas, which this game has, and there are certain techniques you have to incorporate while you're fighting a boss, which... This game kind of has. I feel like with Zelda, you would usually incorporate something you'd find against that boss or you'd have to find some sort of weakness. Whereas this, I feel like, uh, watch this pattern and maybe get lucky with your roll, maybe get lucky with moving around, maybe get lucky with the summon, maybe get lucky. I, I feel like there's definitely just a part of luck and you're going to get hit even though when you think you shouldn't get hit. So uh, I, I like the comparison though, a, a Zelda for adults. But as... Uh, I wanted to share this tweet that I tweeted the other day. So at first, as a new player to Souls games, I couldn't stand Elden Ring at first. I did not understand it. But after putting in the time, leveling, practicing, and exploring the massive world, and really learning as well, I can't stop thinking about Elden Ring. That's the honest truth about this. I cannot stop thinking about it for some reason, even though there are flaws. So let's jump into the first topic I want to say right here. Wait, guys. Chance had something to Combat. say. He had something to add. Uh, I, well, ahead, just Elden. quick, I was going to say, it reminds me of old school Zelda games. Yes. Not necessarily the like, new stuff. like Because the older ones were, they didn't tell you anything. It was drop you in, and it maybe said like, find a mushroom and you're like, but where could it be? And wait, you know, like, yeah, I, that's all I, I'm thinking of link to the past, but you're right. But there were some map icons on, on link to the past. I, I can yeah. definitely say that. So let's talk about combat right away. You guys, I wrote that combat definitely is more engaging compared to other games, but just because it is difficult and more engaging doesn't necessarily mean it is the best combat or better than other games. Like I remember Jay Biz had this huge argument like, oh, the combat is so much better in Souls games and it's incredible. But does that mean it's the best? Bubble boy, I see you shaking and nodding. Give me your thoughts on the combat right away. Tell me what you're thinking. I think Sekiro's is significantly more refined. Um, it's so much faster and like responsive, I feel like. There it can be super clunky in Elden Ring. And I'm okay with it because I'm having so much fun in the other things. And and you can really OP your mage stuff and get away with some things that you that you just would have never been able to do in Sekiro. So that was where I was shaking my head that it that it's by far the best because I, I disagree. I think it's second. It's the second best, but it's not as quick and responsive, I think, as Sekiro was, so. Okay, and Jose, what what do you think about the combat? Because you're playing completely different from us. You're, you're I'm guessing, completely distanced and 
reliant on your magicka. So if you run out of that, like how how is it for you? And if you have to use a sword, yeah, I mean, I I I don't think it's the best combat I've ever experienced in a game. I th- I mean, like I like Resident Evil's combat system a lot better, even though it's a mm-hmm. very very different world. Um, but I yeah. I. I really have come to respect the combat system and I really appreciate mm-hmm. what they do in the, you know, the fact that I am a mage. So a lot of my stuff is ranged has really taught me more about timing, just like with all things in, in Elden Ring and Dark Souls games, just at timing is literally everything. That's the name of the game. Yeah. Um, but you know, building in enough time for you to cast what you need to do. Um, so I, I think it's fun and I think, I think it's a nice mix up from what I used to because it makes me really think about playing, not just playing. Like a lot of games you get used to just twitch reflexes because yeah. and it's like muscle memory where I have to, I feel like it's a chess move that I'm making. Like if I do this wrong, I'm going to die <laughs> like straight up. And yeah. so I have to learn that. Or if, or if like you go against like three enemies, you're probably going to die. Like you gotta, you gotta isolate them. Cause if, if you get more than one, you're just going to get constantly slashed. Okay. Yeah. And to be fair, I wanted to say Jay Bez did agree with me. We were talking about this in the party. He, he's like, he didn't. He is not saying that this is the best combat of any game. And I'm like, well, what about Batman? And he's like, okay, well, that's the best. Like Batman Arkham has awesome yeah, was combat dope. with the punching, the fight, and the countering and stuff like that, and the movement. So he recognizes this. But like, just because I just I'm thinking that, like comparing this combat to Skyrim. Like which one is better, Chance? Like, are you gonna say this? Or, oh like, yeah, Skyrim's basic. Yeah, but Skyrim's still fun though. It's not like it's awful no but what about this compared to witcher that i, I don't have much experience with Witcher. yeah I, god the witchers witcher, is I feel like more so fluid, much though. deeper and yeah. and deeper mm. in that one character you can have all these different options right with elden ring like your one character pretty much has one or two options in terms of and with Jose, he has one, it sounds like. And maybe he's he's rounded out his build a little more and uses a sword. But um, he's he's got his magic, right? Like, it, the Witcher, I think, had... Gosh. I don't know. And, and I also... There's part of me that's like, I don't... Does it matter which is better? To me, like, I am loving the hell out of it. And... Yeah. I You know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I should say that... Well, one thing I, I, I should have mentioned earlier is that the only reason I feel like I'm having success, you guys, is because I leveled my guys so much. My health, my vigor is out of control. Like, I'm basically surviving fights just because my health has, has allowed me to live these battles. I found all the tears and all the seeds, and so I have, I'm just drinking my potions just to stay alive. And I've only leveled health and dexterity, so I'm oh, wow. I'm all in on my katana. Yeah, wow. And I'm all oh, in... Snap. How many um, how many health. flasks so do you have it. that you can drink? I have like twelve. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. What? So uh, that's the game's easy when you can just drink your health okay, back every five but seconds. But just yeah. and you have to admit this live on the air. Um, no, but I still you, die. No, no, no. You you used a guide for that. You oh, absolutely f- did. To find the seeds. Absolutely. Are you kidding? Oh, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like <laughs> in every area, I'm like, what? okay, that's the first thing I do in every area. I'm like, I'm going to find every seed that I, that wow. I can get to easily on the map. Wow. And then I'm going to get every tier okay. because I'm not going to mess around with this. Um, and also learning that leveling is a part of the game. And I think chance are you, I think you explained this or, Bo- or maybe Boggus is like an old souls games. You couldn't just go anywhere to level. Like if you hit a wall, you hit a you wall did. and you Straight just up. had to beat that thing. You couldn't go somewhere to level. So having the ability to go to Kalid or whatever it's called and go through that warp and level up my guy was yes. huge. Like, I've I've felt bad, it, but I've exploited that too. Where I, you could go and you can get like why tw- uh, just because it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just have like I, I feel like I accidentally found the thing and then it shoots me off to the far northeast. And I'm like, it's those little guys, right, that you can get for a thousand yeah, each. Little... And I'm like, the, by the way, the one with the ball and chain will annihilate you. Those yes. are the only ones I was afraid yes. of. Like... And when they do that but claw even ma- chance... magic, it, that was you, getting me. Well, I just rolled through that. Yeah. But but I, I just want to carny really quick. It's not like that was easy though, especially no. with the mage, super easy. Like I could use my flask, but it took me time yeah. in sneaking up yeah. and doing perfect attacks to level my guy. It's not like it wasn't easy. Like it was just an easy, yeah. you know, it, it reminded it me more mage, of other games in that Samurai. it's just like, okay, go do this grind, right? Go do the grind, grind your XP mm-hmm. and then yeah. go back, which is cool. But you don't have to go there. You could go to, there's, 
that's that is what I love. Like I think you were saying, J Biz said, like you can go anywhere. Okay, let's go fight this dragon. Let's go fight that dragon. And I've really, Eric, I can maybe I'll tell you about it now. Eric and I, Eric's the other counselor at school who plays it, and we wrote out like a system of how we use those little green map markers and so we've been using them the mm -hmm. same and like what each thing equals so anytime i'm stuck i go and i look back at my green map markers and i was like okay i'll go try that again or i'll go try this again and so i i'm just i'm never bored is is what yeah, i can that's say that's a great that's point a great perfect segue into the map i said map is incredibly vast detailed and unique but for me, the best parts are the focused castles and dungeons. Small stuff around the world doesn't compare to Skyrim in my eyes. And also the incentive to fight those random open world bosses aren't that great. I think it's, I had a really cool encounter the other night in front of that castle to the south. Um, when I went there the first time, I, I just fought this guy shooting these giant bow and arrows and I went in the castle. But I went back at night to go to a, a, a seed that I had missed and all of a sudden there's this knight riding on a horse at night. And I was like, who the heck is this guy comes and attacks me, you know, very cool. But then at the end I got like some ash that I'm probably never going to use, you know, it's like uh, cool to fight the boss, but like, I don't know if the incentives there and how do I keep track? Like how many bosses that I'm killing and not are missing out completely. And the dragons, they give you the hearts, but then in order for me to use the hearts, I found the place where that was, I don't have enough magicka to really utilize the, these dungeon or these dragon things. So I, I think, don't get me wrong. This world is huge, massive, incredibly detailed, but I feel, do I appreciate the living world? Like, when I, I, of course I'm going to compare that to Skyrim. I feel like Skyrim just does a better job of drawing me to other things where in this, I just feel lost. Like, I think this is something I can go to, you know, or like, he, uh, they mark some of the caves on the map kind of, and I've kind of figured that out a little bit, but give me your, give me your thoughts on the map and the size and the scope the, of Chipotle bear, please. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you can go ahead, Chance. I'll go, go after you. Go ahead. You go. All right. I think the, that what Skyrim did so incredibly well was made every character you ran into part of that world in a very organic way. And in a way you could relate it to the story too. So like I'm fighting for this faction yeah. and I'm part of this brotherhood and things like that. Yeah. Whereas here, unless you're in one of those legacy dungeons, there's re they're just a bad guy you got to kill, right? There's really not much of wait, a... Wait, wait. When you say legacy dungeons, explain that to me because I don't even know like some of the, the little dungeons so, that were in previous so games. No, I think that's just what they're called, isn't it? The like Stormvale oh, Castle, thought, like literally, is the is I think it's called a legacy dungeon. It's when it that, becomes linear. It's when it becomes linear, Dan. Like where you you're literally uh, following. A I thought it meant path. like this was in a previous game and they're putting it in here, like that kind of legacy. Okay. Um, and then the okay, sorry, the one ahead. that I'm at right now is the academy, like the school. I've been calling it the College mm -hmm. of Winterhold. <laughs> Because I forget, I forget <laughs> the name of it. That's and, what I thought the whole yeah, time. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, I'm in there. And I like I've gotten I won't tell you exactly where I've gotten to, but like it, it those are the legacy dungeons, I right? And it. it's where the f Jose, have you beaten it? The Academy? I am so I when I can explain where I'm at, let's get wait till, wait till we get okay. there. Because I'll, so I'll explain. I, it's gonna okay. be a bigger story. So then when you when you do those, those are the legacy dungeons, right? I okay. have gotten to the point where I've kind of forgotten to do those and I've gone out and above to try and make the map go as far as I can. And I ran mm -hmm. into two NPC characters. Ooh, man, that the story has really come into its own now. And I, I, I can't say anything more. I'm telling you, man, because I was the same thing and I didn't even care, though. I was like, I don't care if there's no story, right? But it's it. That's yeah, where exactly. it's not I, as good I, as Skyrim. But man, the, there's yeah. two, and they're fairly close to one another. And I think you'll know exactly who they are. Are when they you, in towers? One's in a church. Is one of them in a tower. Nope. One's in a church, and one is behind an invisible wall. And, and see, and how I know, I know, and, and but just wait because because they they it gives you context to where you're at in the map, and you can see two of the main points on the map and they explain like, this is what that one is. And this is what that one is. And this is why they're warring. And, um, it really has opened up a ton of the story, which I'm, I'm excited about. So. All right. 
How's that give me your thoughts on the map size scope? All I mean, that? I think it's huge. Uh, I mean, like, it's the biggest thing I've ever seen. That's what she said. <laughs> um, yes, thank you. But, uh, no, in, in all seriousness, um, <laughs> I think it's great, and and I think after playing now thirty hours in, I can I haven't I have not explored even half of the map. Like I just haven't, um, even though oh, I know yeah, I can, and I know I know the secrets where you can find the scrolls and stuff. I just haven't had the need to necessarily. Um, I I agree with you guys fully that it's just it's it's definitely overwhelming. Like I I I don't know if we're gonna yeah. get into are we gonna do critiques at some point, Dan, or should I wait for that? I feel like I'm critiquing it right oh, now, okay. but yeah, we'll, we can save it towards the end. Well, I'm, I have a little bit of a critique right here, so go well, ahead. Well, I was going to say, just the one thing, and I, you know... Well, actually, save it, save it, save it, save okay. it, save it. It's just the map is great, man. It's, I think it's beautiful. I like the lands. I Like you said, I don't remember the names, though, so I don't like the fact that there's like... even It, it would be yeah. nice if even in the corner, it like said where I was yeah. at, or if every time I enter a place, it said the name like constantly. Just It would help me make sense of it more a little bit. Um, yeah. And and I agree with you 100%. Uh, I'm not to where Chance is, so the story to me like is basically lost. I'm just trying to become the Elden Lord <laughs> and not die. That's literally what I know about the story. Exactly. exactly. Okay, let's go into this, a little bit of critiques, because like, that's what I'm going to right now, and it kind of ties into what we've already been talking about. I wrote, yes, there might be a cool world, characters, and stories here, but I'm not seeing it. The incentive to play is not the story at all. It is the combat and exploration. And then this is my biggest thing. This is the biggest critique of the game for me, and Jose kind of hit on it. This game needs some sort of quest log yep. or direction. I don't need the direction. I'm not a lot. asking. Yeah, ex- I am not asking for an a Ubisoft over bloated icons uh, overflowing my map. That's not what I'm saying. Or even the Bethesda like markers. But we need something. That's the biggest con for me by far. Give me something away. I, I remember reading that tweet by Jason Shar saying, oh, keep a log We're next to you. Dude, that's great and all, but I ain't got no time for that. And I'm even looking, I was looking at Extra Life's wiki. This is what you should do in every area. I've already missed a bunch of stuff. And it's like frustrating because it's like, I don't want to have to have my, la- literally, I'm, I need my laptop open because I'm not going to look at this on my yeah. screen or, uh, or a tablet, you know. And like, this is what you should be doing in each area. I would enjoy this game. This would be a masterpiece to me if I just had a little, like that little bit of guidance uh, right there. So Chance, you, you're you raising your hand. Uh, go ahead. What were you going to say? I, I think just a bestiary would be helpful at least, right? So then we, yeah. we could Ooh, talk about like not even necessarily a quest log, but just the bestiary of here's the things you have beaten. Or yeah, what, I, and what they gave you. Yeah, I like that too. But well, yeah, you kind of get that with. By the way, I had I didn't even know this until Jay Biz told me while we were playing the other night. He's like, "Hey, did you talk to that giant finger thing back in the in the the table? Didn't even talk to that. Don't even don't even know what that thing is. Talk to the person next to it." And he's like, "Oh, this is the souls part. You get the powers from them." And I was like, "What? I get from the bosses you beat." And I was like, "I, I had no idea. Just totally wop eyed. Didn't know uh, how to use smithing stones. Yeah. I was using my, I was using my level one uchi katana." And he's like, "Are you serious, oh, Dan?" Yeah, we like, were talking yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. And then I finally leveled it up, you know. And he's like, "So, Jose, show me some of your critiques or cons, or specifically related to the quest and and the map." And no, all that, that that's all. Is good. You said the exact one I was going to say on the head. And and to be fair, listening to the trophy room, it was what Joe and Kyle talked about too. So I don't, you know, credit where credits due was just. I don't want an overblown map. I don't want an icon and everything. I, I actually genuinely really appreciate it for the first 15 hours where it was just like, it's so exciting to yeah, explore the, because anytime yeah. I see like a little glow where the coloring's different, like it makes me want to explore. Where the problem is now, and I'm in the game, is I, I'm i ready to start continuing the game. Like yes, I took I took exactly. a break to like go level up and find <laughs> scrolls and weapons and stuff. And, and like, granted, a lot of that I use guides online. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to straight up not lying. Like because you have to. You have to. <laughs> but I'm ready to continue the story. And I, I kind of know where to go. But I just, what's going to become yeah. frustrating is like, I w- even if it was just the NPCs were saying like, ooh, I heard that there's a witch at the, at the whatever the arc in this area of the like, map and everybody's you know, talking like, about this witch and i'm like i gotta go find this freaking witch even if i don't know where <laughs> she's at i know that's my next goal i just don't like the mm-hmm. fact that it's i have no guidance that way and i get that i i can go anywhere and i can fight any boss but like if i'm eventually going to become the elden lord i would just like to know that path and that's why the quest log yeah. i think would be so powerful would be just to like can you list the 15 bosses 
And even though that's overwhelming, you don't have to tell me where they're at. You don't have to tell me literally anything yeah. else. Just tell me their names so I know who I'm looking for. Yeah. And you'd mentioned, well, I wish the NPCs would tell you. Some of them do say stuff to you, but how the heck am I supposed to remember that after searching for 10 minutes? Like, what did you say? Where is this person? Some of them do say stuff, but I still get lost. Like, I can't keep track of all of this. I'm not going to keep a journal. I'm sorry. That's in- absolutely insane. And then, uh, but, 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 go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, there, it, there is a boss list. Um, you maybe haven't run into it yet. Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> You have. That's the other thing. I know you have because of what you said earlier. You may have just ran right past it. Like I did with the, there's a mirror where you can change your beard and stuff. I had no idea until like yeah. two days ago. I, f- I so knew about the So there is a main legacy dungeon boss list and you get story and background about every single one of them. And I can tell you if you'd like to know where it is. And you'll be like, what? Yeah. So it's in the round table. Where is it? And the guy that's in the uh-huh. library that room where the one dude's just standing and he never talks to you yeah, in the library. Talking, so yeah. after you have, and you've beaten Godric, right? You beat the first yep. one or else you wouldn't have had the first two boss, fingers. Yes. So you go and talk to him and you exhaust his dialogue. Speech and then stuff, yeah. he doesn't talk to me. He, no, he does now after you've beaten Godric. So he'll be like, Oh, you really are a, a tarnished and one of us now. And so now I can tell you more He'll tell you, and then he lays it out, and he's and here are the I think it's seven or six main people that you're going after, and then he'll give you a little bit of story about them. But and that has been really cool. It's there's two other huge NPCs, and I'll just leave it at that that you'll see later that really oh, help great. with the story. So yeah. my biggest gripe with it though is I still and I've done everything short of uninstall and reinstall. I still can't play multiplayer. So all this fun <laughs> stuff that everybody's like, oh, this little message and that little message, and oh, wouldn't yeah. it be nice if I could invite somebody in to help me? Um, nope, no help. Just solo shady over here. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I have to say, Chance, that's probably one of my favorite things. I didn't mention this earlier about the game is the random notes because there's sometimes there's like, watch out to the left. I'm like, oh, thanks. You just saved me from dying from this guy or invisible wall here. And I didn't even know invisible walls were a thing until yep. someone told me just there's an invisible yep. wall here. Super frustrating. And there's also some there's also some that mess with you and get you killed. But, but it's funny because like, oh, you son of a gun, you know, and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> watching the people die. Sometimes I don't like it, Chance. You'll see the ghost of somebody fighting or doing something or shadow or whatever you want to call it and sometimes like oh is that an enemy like it's kind of distracting that's the only thing i don't like but the multiplayer i i love just hearing or seeing all those other people so i'm sorry that's not working for you i maybe you should uninstall and reinstall and maybe that'll help you out uh chipotle bear uh did you have any other critiques or anything you want to mention or should we go into some the only other one and it's it's small and and again it's What's hard about it is because I haven't gotten back on the grind of the actual quest, I feel like I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm level 68 or something like that right now. Mm -hmm. So like not, I know I'm not like crazy high, but I'm I'm high, I'm high though. And it's getting to the point where it's so expensive to buy my next level that just like, it feels like the (laughs) only way I can do that is by grinding. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't feel like I'm going to get those souls from playing the game. And so like... I don't know. I don't know what's better because I don't want to say just make it easy. I want to level up to two hundred by doing nothing. Like I want to earn it. I just feel like people are like when they, when they get to level hundred, they're saying it costs them eighty thousand runes mm-hmm. to get to their next level, and just like that seems excessive to me. So I don't. I don't know what necessarily a best better system is. And then the only other tiny critique, and you probably don't know this because you're not a mage, you cannot level up your staff. Like you can level up swords, you can't do that to a staff, which I think is stupid. Yeah. I wish I could. Did you get the meteorite? Uh, right yes, staff? I did. Because that scales with your intelligence. There you go. That's all you need. The you can improve. You can it, improve them. Can't you? You somehow? can improve them. Yeah. No, you, you can't. Can like with your the ashes of, Not at the smithing stones. Uh, tell me about the ashes of war. You can improve, improve those that. too. So Roderica, she's the lady that gives you the jellyfish. Um, spirit of war. You have to. You can. You talk to the uh, God blacksmith in the round table thing, and he'll bring her oh. over, and then she improves your spirits of war, which I just got one today. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it is incredible. It takes up, and I have a ton of magicka. It takes up the entire bar. See, I was going to say, I can't even I can't The even, entire I can't even call bar, it, so. it is, he, it's like having a, another player there with me. 
Oh, He's a that's beast. Cool. Well, then that'll make it. But yeah, Jose, easy. I have my seals. I can I can upgrade those. Hmm. No, my well, staff. I can do the magic, not the staff, though. That's that my weapon, dude. Your like magic the is weapon so that though. I have. I can upgrade those. Oh, the meteorite staff, you can't. Like, you literally cannot. Yeah, some you may or may not, but there might be some Jose that you can get and they can level up. I want to say on the leveling thing, you're right, though. It's To me, it's gotten to the point where it's where, how I've gotten so high is, yeah, I spent a crap ton of time grinding those imps or whatever the heck they are and leveling up. And to me, it's like I've gotten to the point where it's like I, I, I go into an area and I don't even care about half the enemies because I'm like, it's just not worth my time to grind exactly. on these. If I want to grind, I got to go to a spot to grind and I'll do it there because that's not efficient. And then I've seen videos once you get to like 120, 150 where people do all this crazy stuff just to get those runes because it's just insane. It's not worth your time to explore the world and level up in other parts because it's like time wise, it just doesn't make sense and you're not going to get much out of it. So um, let's go into chances questions here. Where have we gone? I am at. I've gone first area, the Khaled to the east, northwest to the lakes where I think Jose is, and then I've gone just past that. So I have defeated four of the main bosses. I beat the book lady. Jose, have fun with that one. That one was pretty difficult for me because I don't. I won't say anything. But that that one uh, was. Uh, so that's where I've been. I've beaten four bosses, like I said. I mean, four of the main ones, I think. I've beaten lots of random other ones around the world. Chance, what were you going to say? Book Lady, is she at the College of Winterhold? Have you not beaten that? No, I, no, I'm not. At, I've been yeah. to the Wolf. Did you beat the Wolf? So I'm yeah, stuck that's the at the Wolf. Okay. So, okay, so <laughs> Book Lady. <laughs> Have fun with that one. Um and then uh, most exciting moments for me was f defeating that first boss. Man, oh man, that was... I don't know how anyone could do that at the, like if you're like a level three or, or whatever, you're 10 or whatever. like that, that I had to grind for, but that was exhilarating. Now I think if I went back and did it after learning a little bit, I think I could give it a good run just being at a normal level and, and knowing its patterns a little bit more. Uh, most frustrating, the first boss. And uh, no, I take that back. The no, I take that back, you guys. The ugh, the book lady, and you'll know. Um, one, I don't want to spoil it. Uh, you guys are close enough. What, what it, this isn't really a spoiler, it's not, I won't even say anything about the fight because, yeah. The getting to the boss, this is the one where you're going to be the furthest away, and there's not like something convenient right there, and it is awful having to run back to get back to this boss you guys so have fun with that i i would go into it already being low on health and being like this is stupid and i guess javis is like yeah that's how the old souls games were you had to go they were seriously long so, dude like hugely like long. that could have been like the easiest <laughs> one if it was in second yeah exactly yeah. and that's why Biz was even saying like surprisingly he's like yeah dan i was like did i miss something Biz? he's like no that one was pretty long to get back and he's like that's not even that bad compared and to those statues of marika oh. like man those are just yeah, yeah. so nice dude <laughs> it's like those weren't in other games no. God, oh man no. no 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 yeah so most bizarre moment, I think I kind of mentioned it earlier, was that random night. Like, that was really cool, but I'd have to think more about that. That m coolest enemy that I found, w maybe chance you share one, because why, why don't you go through those now? Yeah. Blah, 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 what, 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 where have you gone? Who have you beat? Um, I mean, yeah, uh, that's where like that's We're where all I'm around the same wishing, part. I'm just slightly ahead of yeah, you. Yeah, that's where I'm wishing there was a bestiary, because I, like, I don't even remember. I've beaten the one dragon... The first one, I think his name's Argeel. That was probably one of the coolest moments when he comes was flying that the one in, in, in yeah, on the lake. In. And like when he the first time you see his fire come out, that was when I like really saw the power of the Series X and how good that game was. Because there was really? zero oh, I gotta jump frame in rate drop. Uh I didn't even know that thing was there until just <laughs> yesterday at a high level. Like just ran into him randomly like that's what i'm talking about i would have yep. never known that you were supposed to run into yep. him earlier so sorry Go well ahead. and so and but this and this is kind of a i don't know cheating on this question the coolest moment for me for this game isn't even something that happens in the game so what it is and i, I have to explain this here is so the lady counselors at gateway they on tuesday mornings they have their yoga club 
And they're always like, oh, Chance and Eric, you guys should come. And we're like, no, we're going to start our Elden Ring support club, right? So we'll just talk about Elden Ring. And it's been every single day. And now there's a, there's two other teachers that come, and we just talk about what we did in Elden Ring the night before. That's amazing. Right? That's and it's amazing. like that has not happened in a game since Tomb Raider 2, I think, was the last time That's when I would, I would run. I'd be so excited. I, I don't know that I did that with Skyrim. And if I did... Dude, Skyrim was... Revel- we were we you're forgetting maybe the power of Skyrim. maybe 11 11 11 man that was the last time i could be here of a here's what like what the difference though and the reason that it was so like inspiring to me i guess is with skyrim we were probably talking while we were playing skyrim right yeah. and stuff like that it's not this analog, is this is yeah, like a kitty little moment like a giddy moment of like oh right and like we're all having such different experiences and we're all doing totally different things but there's like hey you should try and look for this or you should look for that or i got a lantern it's like what's a lantern what does that do well it makes us you don't have to use that crappy torch all the time like that is so fun and that yeah. it, you know a game that i've had zero social experience with while playing i get to go and have all kinds of a social experience with afterwards so i just i think it's so cool it's so cool Very um the, cool. Uh, exciting moment frustrating the most moment. frustrating moment was when you the at stormvale castle when you're on the cliff side i had about and this isn't going to sound like a, a lot right now or anymore but at the time i had like 10,000 runes on me and I got all the way through that up to the the elevator part. You know where I'm talking about, right? Where that first night is at. Yep. Or the second night, because the first one, there's that little cutscene, And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm just going to run away from him. So I run up that circular staircase. And then there's left and right. And I'm like, I'm going to choose right. But the save point, oh. the grace points to the left. Yeah, and so I go to, to the, the right yeah, and I'm I know like, exactly where you're talking and I, about. And then there's the other elevator, but you it's can't go down there because yeah. you haven't got it the first time. I turn around, he's right there, bam, dead. And I'm like, well, that's okay. I can get back there pretty easy, <laughs> right? Can, and it's 10, which, God, it would have been like four levels, I think, at the time. So then I'm like, oh, I got this dodge roll right off the cliff. <laughs> there goes 10,000 runes. And killer. I was just like, Ah, uh, and I think that's what it is, right? Like everyone's like, "Oh, I'm just constantly dying." I'm not constantly dying. It's when I do die, it's just like, yeah, getting it back. Oh my god, no! Please, please, please. Um, and then probably one of the coolest moments was this is the first Soulsborne game I think I've ever played where I have beaten a boss on a first try, and not one of the legacy bosses. So it wasn't Godric, it wasn't Margit. Um, Definitely wasn't that wolf. That guy's destroying me. Um, but a couple of the <laughs> dungeon bosses I've beat. I think um, I beat the wolf. Yeah, uh uh-uh. so. uh. I beat the second boss on my first, the second castle guy. Like Godric? Uh, like the. Try. Should be Godric on your first? That's the guy with the dragon yeah, arm? First try. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Wow. That was a joke. Wow. Well, because you guys had the. You had the. My, I had my friend come in. You ran into yeah, I had her did summon right, and so her her yeah. had her annihilated him. Jose's like you had a friend. No, I did. Her dad is the <laughs> okay. guy that gives you all the story for every legacy boss. Oh yeah, so I had her, and I was like, "This is easy. This is a joke. I'm gonna call in friends every time." Jose, what about you? Where have you gone? You, you beat. It sounds like you're around the same area. So I guess you can kind of skip that. Um, exciting moments, frustrating, bizarre, coolest enemy you found. So I um, I am very similar to you guys where I'm at the Academy, and I haven't even started it. So I, I, I Winterhold. Winterhold, whatever yeah. it's called. Um, I have beaten Margit. I have beaten Godric. And I've, but I actually have beaten another one of the big bosses, the Royal Knight Loretta. Um, you'll get to play her later. The reason I've beaten her is because as I was leveling up my mage, you get a really cool spell from her that I wanted. And so I went over and did it. And I actually beat her in like three tries, which I was really proud of myself, which is cool. Um, exciting stuff. It's just anytime you get, like when you get the boss to like half life, you're like, okay, I can do it. Like, this is it. Does you, I mean, I feel my adrenaline rise. I also, I don't know if you had that experience where it's somewhere in like the South part, there's like a little shallow lake with a bunch of little crabs. And I was like playing it really early in the game where I was like, oh my God, sweet. I'm going to get a ton of rubes. Cause I'm just like one shotting these crabs and you get to the middle of the lake and this giant one just pops out of the ground and literally like scared me. And I'm like running for my life. Um, and similarly in the South, there's a bear that does that too. Like it just, it literally like, a, it like warps and it's in your face and it's hyper aggressive. And that was very exciting and fun. 
Um, and then the third thing there is um, is leveling up my mage. So actually, that's what I did last night. I spent about four hours running around, and I got all the like. I can get. I have like six memory slots now for my magic spells, so I can have six at one time. And I got a bunch of really cool spells. I got the meteorite staff, and um, so I'm like ready. So that's why like tonight, like I'm ready to start hitting the academy and like feeling like I have. Because I've been let's go, baby. I've been playing as the mage with just the glintstone pebble, which is literally the first spell you get. It's great. And it's fine. That's all you that's need. That's all I've been playing yeah, that's with. That's all you need. Um, dude, that's all you need. Dude, you think that, but dude, there are some bosses where it takes off like ten of their like ten thousand, and I'm just really? like, I, I'll be here for six hours. I'm not doing that. So anyway, so I'm excited for that. Frustrating was definitely Market and the Golden Knight at the beginning of the game. Like the first couple of times, like, oh, let me try this guy, and I just get annihilated. And I was like, okay, clearly this is a lesson. Come back. Um, and then also Jabez told us about that crystal cave. God, it took me sir, for freaking yeah. ever just to get to the boss. <laughs> just got to run by. And then, yeah. and then I, the boss, dude, that's one where Dan, I was, every glintstone pebble took him down a sliver of health and I have nothing stronger. So I was like, okay, I got to go grind some stuff out to get that, that thing that he told us about. So I got to go do that tonight too. The bizarre thing, um, there's a there's the I forgot what it's called, but it's the house in the north part of the thing where there's these like hands with like twelve fingers on them. Very Ooh, bizarre. I hate those they're, things. They're weird looking things. things. And then I, those would kill me. The big ones. Ooh. Yeah. And I, there's also in the lake the turtle with the bell with no head, the giant bell on its belly. Just very bizarre. Oh, the mausoleums. Creature. Do you not know what those are? Nope. The mausoleums, oh, they're no, all no, over no, the no. place. I don't, don't know what those are. Okay, okay so this out. is really important, and it's not, I mean, it's... I, oh, I had a, bit, a bunch of clips of me trying to jump on over my horse and die. Okay, so over over those, my God, they're <laughs> extremely important. So they have a bunch of, like, stone, or, like, um, oh, God, like, ice shards or something all on their legs. You have to chop all that off, and then they fall down. You go inside of it, and that like the thing that like yellow thing that you got from Audric when you beat him, you double it. So there's two things you can buy with it, right? And then, or you could sell it for twenty. So there's really three different things you could get with them, but you only get to trade in one. Well, when you take it to the mausoleum, they duplicate it, so you can get like one weapon and twenty thousand runes, or both weapons, or forty thousand runes. Those mausoleums are super important, okay. and. Had no and extremely idea. easy. Had it, no it'll idea. take you three, like three minutes to beat them. Um, and so yeah. that was bizarre. And then the coolest thing for me so far, and again, it's very early, was the cutscene with Godric, where like you get him to just over half, and it, he's like, "I need the health of the dragon," and he takes like the dragon head. I was like, "This is freaking amazing!" So I, that was one of the coolest moments I've had so far in the game. I'm sure there's more to come. So yeah, dude, I'm just I'm loving the game. Like I literally yeah. at work am thinking about it, and like at, when I yeah. have my ten minute lunch break as I'm scarfing something at work, I'm like, what can I watch about Look my mage yeah. to get overpowered and stuff? Like yeah. it's 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 bad. <laughs> it's it is unique, and I, again, uh, despite my critiques, I do think it's a phenomenal game. I think it's worth everybody's time to try it. But you have to know that you you you're gonna die. You need to level your character. And you're not. You're gonna have to look things up. I I don't know how anyone could play this without looking things up because it's it's virtually impossible to me. Um, if I didn't have a job, but, I could. But if I have a if you have any kind of job or family, <laughs> not possible. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a few things of the the sites of grace kind of pointing you in the direction. But some of them, I feel like you know what would have been nice is after you killed something that it was pointing to, those go away. Agreed. So, okay, Agreed. I know I cleared wherever you were pointing to. You know, something as simple as that. So Snelling, I know you're listening. I think it's worth your time, but it might not be what you want because you're so against looking things up and dying. Chance, go ahead. Absolutely. The the last thing I'd say about that's amazing is even if you don't play the game, what it's given to the universe of memes um, is just yeah. it's it's <laughs> worth every penny. So very true, very very true. I I do think this is an incredible game, and I, I think I was saying like it's a nine out of ten for me. It's it's that close to being a masterpiece. Like it, it's just missing a few little things, but definitely worth your time on the XRT rating scale. I don't even think we really need to do a review. Like we're all obsessed with it. I can't stop thinking about yeah. it. We're gonna go play it very soon. Right now, you're probably thinking, Dan, close this up. I want to go play. Yeah, let's Elden wrap it up. Okay, we'll, wrap we'll do it that. Up. So let's wrap it up. That has been our Elden Noob segment. Can't wait to post this. Gentlemen, what has been the best food you've had this weekend? I've got some bangers. So uh, I'll go last. Uh, 
Chipotle bear. Yeah, let me you. start this time. This so week? my my best thing I had this week, two of them. One of them was the Costco orange chicken. So not at the food court, but like in their frozen aisle, they actually have this orange chicken. I think you've mentioned this before. You can't bring it back. I can, it could still you've be the best. This. I have we this in the Popeyes notes. We do Popeyes literally every week, but it's fine. Yeah, I can I can do the same thing. Uh, it was great. It was, but but the, my that wasn't my best. That was my runner up. My best thing was a brand new thing we tried in our house. It was a jalapeno popper grilled cheese sandwich. Um, and basically, I got it from uh, Jeff Morrow. He's a he's a chef on the Food Network. He's one of our send favorite it to guys. me right now. Dude, it's literally so you just you get some cream cheese and some like of the Costco Mexican cheese and you put it in a bowl, you mix it together. You I heat it up just a little bit so it's smooth. You put that on your grilled cheese bread and then you get a jalapeno, put it in the oven till it blisters, put it in a bag and let the skin fall off and then you put that in there. Dude, it was it was I I literally was so impressed with myself cuz it was so delicious. I literally made an extra lunch which for me for lunch at work like it tasted like a jalapeno popper in a ch- grilled cheese sandwich, dude. It was so good. Like, it was amazing. It sounds amazing. I would only substitute, here's my thing, Jose. I love f- fresh chopped jalapeno. That's how I want to do it. I don't know if I like the the oven popper. Well, it's, it's the it, mouthfeel, you know? though, because if you leave it raw, it's going to be real yeah. crunchy. And I like that it was actually very, like, I like that. smushy, oh, like see, a grilled like cheese. So, but yeah, gotcha. eat, that's fine, too, if you want just a fresh jalapeno. But it is so good. I, I recommend it highly. Incredible new. Uh, thing you found there, Chipotle Bear. Bubble Boy, what about you? What was the best food you had this yeah, week? Yeah, so Ashley had a dentist appointment on Monday, and our dentist office is right off of Smoky Hill and E-470, which, if you don't know, is the location of a... Yeah. You got it. So we had that uh, on Monday. I thought it was Smoky Hill and E-470 they E-470, have one there? E-470, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, slightly like it's like a block west of E four seventy, but it's it's caddy corner to Southlands. Like Southlands is on the northeast side of that, and this is on the southwest side of that. So, do you do the standard double? Mm-hmm. Two standard sandwich. double. Ash- Tell me you did. It. Ashley was ordering for me, so I just I I <laughs> didn't get my strawberry lemonade, but I got the one sandwich and red beans and rice. So. All right. Oh, red beans and rice. That's one of my favorites. That's My dad is obsessed with those red beans and rice as well. Staple. So the best food, guys, I had a great day of food. Wednesday, maybe this contributed to my stomach pain. Wednesday, driving home from work. Where did I stop, Jose? You stopped at Popeye's. I wanted the song, but thank you. Yes, I stopped at Popeye's. <laughs> Add one to our list. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then played basketball game, played two great – we had a great play, uh, playoff win, 53-52 the first game. It was a battle, had 20 points. Went to the second game against the undefeated team, another battle, but we lost. But I felt good. Two games at my old-ass age of 37, uh, we, were, we were just tired at that point. We were done. So on the way back, I told you the story about the horrible Chipotle experience I had. They literally only had steak, didn't have any of the ingredients. Luckily, they had all the ingredients I wanted. And com- I all having said all that, Jose, remember, uh, it was amazing. My Chipotle was incredible that night. Lucky for me, though, they had everything I wanted. But if somebody else came in wanting some other stuff, they were screwed. And this was at 9.30 uh, to our listeners. I came in at 9.30. They basically had already closed off everything, and they only had steak. That was it. Luckily, I wanted, I'll wanted. i have steak, and Allie wanted a veggie one. So my Chipotle and Popeye's in the same day, incredible day of food. But believe it or not, gentlemen, that was not the best food I had this week. The best food, huge shout out to Allie Wilenzik, my wife. Today, she made these ham and cheese sliders. And I'm telling you, boys, I'm going to have to make, have her make them for you. They are phenomenal. It, she, she puts this like slight mustard uh, sauce on, I don't know what it is, on top of the buns, then she bakes it on there. It's got mayonnaise, the cheese, the ham. I'm going to go eat well, some grand, more right grand, now. You can finally invite us over right to see your renovations. It's only been a year and a half. I've invited you guys over many well, times, haven't. okay? Chances in Kansas. Um, and then we, we also get the shout out here, you guys, to the Dole, I think I believe it's Dole, the, those bagged chopped salads, you know, Jose, that I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, pre-prepped, I love them. Supers. Yes, the one with the peppercorn ranch, I believe. Phenomenal. Thank you, Chance. I saw you pointing over there. I hadn't had those before. Switched it up. Usually we get those Southwest ones. Fantastic pairing with these sliders. So shout out again, Allie, the best food I had this week. 
her classic ham and cheese sliders. Um, I also wanted to say quickly as we close the show, this has been Xbox Record This, episode 44, a.k.a. Elden Noob's review. Um, you can follow the show at Xbox Record This. Um, you can follow me at Daddy Diwali across all social media. I want to give a huge shout out to Mr. K Step again, Kyle Stevenson. Thank you from the PS Trophy Room for coming on our show. That was such a fun episode. And thank you for shouting us out at the end of your show. That was really awesome to hear you mention us. Uh, I wrote to him saying, like, I don't know if you caught that chance at the end of the show. He, he said he was on Xbox Record This. And it was really I cool to hear finished it yet. another. Oh, it, it's he, at, he is it said, after the he, Gran Turismo review? No, it's the grand It's at the end yeah, of the show. The end. It's at the end of the show. Yeah. Hearing our podcast on another person's podcast was really Felt cool. Good. So shout out, Kyle. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, you didn't have to do that, but thanks again for coming on, and you're welcome anytime. So uh, Chipotle Bear, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Chipotle underscore Bear, or you can find me on the Instagram, Chipotle Bear. Uh, always happy to chat with people and answer questions. Always love chatting with uh, X Bacon Gaming as well. Yep, shout out to X Bacon and Bubble Boy. Where can people find you? Oh, wait, uh, big news: Bubble Boy is uh, still I, assistant to the assistant to the co-host. So yeah, and I keep tweeting. It's mostly just talking to Kyle back and forth, but that's okay. Yeah. And <laughs> I had sent to him because I thought it was one of our news stories. Big Kyle the, simp over. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the tiered Spartacus system, and I still have the best idea that I've ever heard anybody come up with, which play is pass. well, okay, so that. But then if they tier it. <laughs> It's play pass, and you get your appetizer tier, your entree tier, and your buffet tier. Uh, Let's talk about that next episode. Because I, I was one that put it in the show notes, but I put it in today, so we can talk about it next week. That's an interesting topic, too. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the play pass next week. As always, Tarnished, see you online. See you online. See you online. I just want to take time to say thank you for my family, my two beautiful Beautiful, handsome, striking sons, Walker and Texas Ranger, or TR, as we call them. And, of course, my red-hot smoking wife, Carly, who's a stone-cold fox, mm. who if you were to rate her ass on 100, it would easily be a 94. Mm. <laughs> Shout out to Allie. You have a 94 out of 100 ass. Xbox, record this. as a podcast created by Daniel Walensic. You can follow him at Daddy Diwali on all social media. The assistant to the co-host is Jose Martinez, and you can follow him at Chipotle underscore bear on Twitter. The assistant to the assistant to the co-host is Chance Siegel, and you can follow him at BubbleBoyN7. You can follow the show at Xbox Record This on all social media. If you'd like to find out more about the show, visit XboxRecordThis.com.